This is problem number five for problem set number one. A copper calorimeter can with mass 0.446 kilograms contains 0.095 kilogram of ice. The system is initially at zero degrees Celsius. Part A, if 0 0.0350 kilogram of steam at 100 degrees Celsius and one atmospheric pressure is added to the can, what's the final temperature of the calorimeter can and its contents? Part B, at the final temperature, how many kilograms are there of ice, how many of liquid water, and how many of steam? Okay, well, let's write down the given information first. We know that the mass of copper is 0 0.446 kilograms. The mass of ice is 0 0.095 kilograms. The system, T0, is at 0 degrees Celsius. Okay. Uh, the mass of steam, so M, M steam is equal to 0 0.035 kilograms. And the initial temperature of steam is equal to 100 degrees Celsius. And that is at one atmospheric pressure. So that matters because um, it affects the boiling point, basically and melting point, right, of a material. All right. So, uh, we want to find out the final temperature. What is the final temperature of the calorimeter can and its contents? So, TF. All right. Um, first, let's look at this graph this is temperature this is heat added this is for water um, okay this is let's, let's use green this is for solid liquid and gas, okay, and let's use pink. This is the melting point, this is the boiling point for water, okay. All right, for water, I know that the melting point is T melt equals zero degrees Celsius. T boil, T boil equals 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, so it said the system is initially at zero degrees Celsius. And then we added a certain amount of steam at 100 degrees Celsius, okay? So, Use blue. Yeah, so we started here at the melting point and we added something at the boiling point, the steam right here. So just thinking about that, I'm going to assume that after everything sets and everything reaches thermal equilibrium, meaning everything's at the same temperature, I'm going to assume it's going to land somewhere here in the liquid phase, in the liquid region right here. Right, because we started at T melt, we added something at 100 degrees Celsius, so we're gonna end up somewhere here in the middle. So what that means is, is the, uh, the mass of ice, so that means ice will turn, will turn to water, turn to liquid, liquid water 
and uh, the steam, the mass of steam added, the steam will uh, condense to liquid water also. And why does that matter? Because that means the ice will experience experiences a phase change, right? Because it goes from solid to liquid. So that's a latent heat of fusion because it goes from solid to liquid. And for the steam, the gas, that can condenses to liquid water, that will be the latent heat of vaporization, right? Because water also, or sorry, uh, steam also experiences a phase change. All right, so those are important because as we know in calorimetry, the sum of all heat transfer equals zero, right? See, the sum of all heat transfer, Q is heat transfer, that equals zero, okay? And there are two things there. That's the mass times specific heat times change in temperature. That's a heat transfer. Uh, necessary to change temperature within the same phase, right? That's this guy, that's for the same phase, same phase. And then we also have the uh, the heat transfer necessary to change phase, which is this guy right here, change phase change phase, heat transfer necessary to change phase, and heat transfer necessary to change temperature within the same phase up here, okay? Um, again, these plus or minuses just depends on if you're adding heat into the system or is heat removed from the system, okay? It's positive when heat is added into the system, negative when heat is removed from the system. Okay, so we're going to use that right now to solve this problem. Okay, so we've got copper, ice, and steam. Okay, so let's do this. So this becomes, so we've got the mass of copper, also uh before I get into that, actually, the I searched this on Google, but um, the boiling point and melting point of copper, so T copper melt, T copper boil, is equal to 1,085 degrees Celsius, and boiling for copper is 2,595 degrees Celsius. Okay, these temperatures are both way above either our melting point, the zero or 100. So I know that copper will not change phase. Copper will remain a solid can, okay? So that means that I don't need to use this formula for copper, just it's gonna remain in the same phase, okay? That's kind of important to know. All right, so, okay, back to this guy. So this becomes uh, the mass of copper, the mass of copper times specific heat of copper times the change in uh, temperature for copper, Tf uh, minus T0. Okay. Um, and then we add ice. So we got the mass of ice, specific heat of, of water, since ice is just solid water times a uh, change in temperature. So Tf minus T0, right? Um, and then let's not forget that water also experiences, see, uh, 
sorry, the ice also experiences a phase change. See, it turns into liquid water. So we've got to use this. We've got to add that into our heat transfer equation. So um, what happens? So it's ice. It goes, turns into water. So temperature, it, it, um, it receives heat. So it takes in heat. So that's plus, right? Plus. Uh, the mass of ice time, times, uh, so, so ice solid to liquid, so we use latent heat of fusion times latent heat of fusion for water, okay? And uh, I'm just going to move this guy a little bit out of the way. It's kind of in the way, so I'll just move it right there, all right? And then plus... Uh, the steam, so mass of steam, okay, times a specific heat of water, because steam is just a gaseous form of water, um, times the temperature change, so Tf minus T naught, oh, sorry, not T naught, but actually T steam naught, see right here, because we added that, right? We added this mass of steam at 100 degrees uh, Celsius. So, so T steam naught um, and we also need to add a this guy because steam condenses to liquid water. So steam experiences a phase change. All right, so is it a plus or minus? So let's look here. Let's use a different color. What haven't we used? We haven't used, we've used a lot of colors, but we haven't used fuchsia, okay? So steam is a gas, steam is a gas. It turns into liquid, it condenses to liquid. So we know we're gonna use latent heat of vaporization, but also the temperature decreases. So heat leaves the steam, right? So we're gonna use minus. Okay, so I'll go back to black ink. So minus the mass of steam times the latent heat of vaporization for water. Okay, and that equals zero. All right. Um, let's see. Let's let's see what we've got so far. We know the mass of copper. We know we're looking for the final temperature. We know initial temperature. We know the mass of ice, looking for that guy. Uh, we know initial temperature, we got the mass of ice. This guy, we need uh, mass of steam. We have uh, final temperature we're looking for. We've got the initial temperature of steam, we've got the mass of steam, and we're also looking for that. Okay, so for these guys, right here, the specific heat of copper, specific heat of water, uh, latent heat of fusion for water, specific heat of water, latent heat of vaporization for water. We can all just find that on Google, and I actually already did that, just to save you some time, and I will tell you right now, I'll, I'll put it in green, so it's everything in the screen, it, I just got that from Google, okay? So specific heat for copper is equal to 390 uh, joules per kilogram Kelvin, okay? Specific heat for water is equal to 4.19 times 10 to the third joules per kilogram Kelvin. Uh, latent heat effusion for water is equal to 3.34 times 10 to the five uh, joules per kilogram and uh, latent heat of vaporization for water is 2,256 times 10 to the 3 joules per kilogram okay and again I just got that from Google likely on a test that will probably be given to you okay um, so so we've got this now we've got this Got this, got this, and we've got this. 
So really all we're solving for is TF and that's all we're missing. So that's perfect. We can solve this equation, okay? So, um, let's see, let's, let's try to cancel some things out. Since T naught is equal to zero degrees Celsius, let's keep it at Celsius so we could cancel stuff out, okay? So this cancels out to zero, this cancels out to zero, and I think that's that's all that cancels out to zero, but it's better than nothing. Um, so we are left with zero equals the mass of copper times the specific heat of copper times the final temperature plus mass of ice times specific heat of water, right? Since ice is just solid water times the final temperature plus the mass of ice times the latent heat of fusion for water, plus mass of steam, times specific heat of water, since so steam is just a gaseous form of water, times uh, final temperature. Also minus uh, mass of steam, times specific heat of water, times initial temperature of steam, um, and minus mass of steam, times the latent heat of vaporization for water. Cool. So that can become, so let, let me just mark out what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that, I'm looking for that, I'm looking for that, okay. All right, so I could move um, these guys to the other side. So I have mass of steam times uh, times specific heat of water times the initial temperature of steam plus mass of steam times the heat of vaporization of water uh, minus mass of ice times latent heat of fusion for water equals equals uh, final temperature times mass of copper, specific heat of copper, plus mass of ice, specific heat of water, okay, plus mass of steam, specific heat of water, okay, so I've got that, so then final temperature is equal to Mass of steam, specific heat of water, initial temperature of steam, plus mass of steam, latent heat of vaporization of water, minus mass of ice, times latent heat of fusion for water. And divide that all by mass of copper, specific times specific heat of copper, plus mass of ice, times specific heat of water, plus mass of steam, times specific heat of water. Okay, um, Okay. yeah, I think, yep, that's it. So we know the values for everything here, right? It's all up here. We know those values. So at this point, it's just plug and chug. If you get to this point right here, you pretty much know what you're doing. You're you're doing really well. And you'll probably ace the test. So now that is equal to just plugging and chugging our values. So that would be, uh, oops, what is the mass of steam? So, so that would be 0 0.035 kilograms times 4,190 joules uh, per kilogram Kelvin times 100 degrees Celsius, since that is the initial temperature of steam right there, right, right there. Okay, plus 
mass of steam that was 0 0.035 kilograms times latent heat of vaporization for water that's 2256 times 10 to the third joules per kilogram um, I'm gonna have to shrink this up a little bit Okay. Um, okay, and then minus uh, mass of ice, which is 0 0.095 kilograms times the latent heat of fusion for water, 3.34 times 10 to the fifth, is it? Yeah to the fifth joules per kilogram, okay? Divided by mass of copper, that's 0 0.446 kilograms times 390 joules per kilogram Kelvin plus mass of ice, that's 0 0.095 kilograms times a uh, specific heat of water, 4.19 times 10 to the third joules per kilogram Kelvin, okay, plus the mass of steam, that is 0 0.035 kilograms times the specific heat of water, 4.19 times 10 to the third joules per kilogram Kelvin, okay, so that is our TF, final temperature. And if you plug that in the calculator, you will find that the final temperature, which is what they were asking for, right? What is the final temperature of the Keller American and its contents? So after thermal equilibrium, uh, the final temperature is 86.13 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that is part A of the problem. 86.13 degrees Celsius. What is part B? At the final temperature, how many kilograms are there of ice, how many of liquid water, and how many of steam? Okay, so for part B, I will again refer to this. Actually, I'm just going to move this guy. I will refer to, to this. Um, ah. I don't want that. Okay, I'll refer. All right, forget that. Okay, for part B, at the final temperature, how many kilograms are there of ice, how many of liquid water, and how many of steam? Okay, so for water, solid, liquid, and gas, right? Heat added, heat added. Apologies for the poor handwriting. Um, but this is for water, and this is the melting point, this is the boiling point. We know that for water, that the boiling point is T boil equals 100 degrees Celsius. T melt equals zero degrees Celsius, right? So we're trying to figure out how many kilograms are there of ice, how many of water in liquid, and how many of steam, which is a gas. I know my TF is gonna be somewhere right here, right? TF equals 86.13 degrees Celsius. That's what we solved for right here. And that is in the liquid region, so therefore, therefore, we're gonna have zero kilogram of ice, zero kilograms of steam, and whatever we started with, uh, 0 0.035, 0 0.035, 
point oh yeah point zero three five kilogram of steam and point zero nine five kilogram of ice okay that is going to be water now so we're going to have uh, zero point zero nine five kilograms plus zero point zero three five kilogram this was initially what was that initially initially that was ice and initially that was steam now that turns into water so if you add that together that is 0 0.13 kilograms of liquid water okay so that is uh, the answer to part b Let's use pink for that okay there you go that's for part b